Was Jesus a myth based off the Roman god Romulus? Many Christ-mythers, like Richard Carrier, have argued that Jesus never existed, and in constructing the myth of the life of Jesus, the Gospel authors borrowed elements from the story of Romulus. Carrier and many others have argued that Romulus was claimed to have been born of the Vestal Virgin, Rhea. Romulus was an incarnate god that became human to establish a kingdom on earth. The story of Romulus and Remus being tossed in the river and left for dead correlates to the slaughter of the innocent in Bethlehem. Romulus was called Son of God. He gave a great commission or instructions for future followers. There was a darkness that covered the area just before his death. He was killed in a conspiracy by the ruling powers, like how Jesus was killed by the Jewish authorities. He was snatched away to heaven by a whirlwind, and later on made post-mortem appearances. His corpse went missing after his death, and he received a new immortal body that had a shining appearance. And Romulus was known afterwards as Corinus, who belonged to a triad of deities, just like Jesus. So if all these claims by various Christ mythers are true, then do we have enough evidence to suggest elements of the life of Jesus were copied from Romulus? Well, not really. In fact, we should look at the evidence in primary sources to see for ourselves what it says. First, neither Livy or Plutarch ever claimed Romulus was born of a virgin. His mother was a Vestal Virgin before conception, and she did claim the god Mars was the father of her twins, but Livy tells us this was because the god Mars raped her. That is not a virgin birth by a long stretch. Plutarch tells us she claimed the father was Mars, but then says that she was actually raped by someone else, and she just tried to pass off her children as sons of Mars. Plutarch also doesn't say or even hint that Rhea claimed that this was a miraculous conception without intercourse, just that her twins were the product of Mars. And given what we know about Roman mythology, the gods always made their children through some form of sex or release of their seed. So both authors claim Romulus was the product of rape. There is no hint of a virgin birth in either tale. This next one is not true. Plutarch seems to say Romulus was just sent by the gods and became a god or sort of like one after he was taken up to heaven. Not that he was already a god and became human, like with Jesus. Romulus seems to have come into existence at his birth and was only later appointed to godhood. Jesus is eternally god before he was human, during and after. Plus, the kingdoms that each wanted to establish were far different as well, and that one should be pretty obvious. Also, even if Plutarch was implying Romulus existed as a god before his human birth, his writings actually postdate Paul by quite a few decades, so the Christians could not have stolen this from Plutarch. This next one seems like quite a stretch. Romulus and Remus were disposed of in a way that was actually typical of the day. Romans sadly would leave their infants in the wilderness for dead, which is nothing like Joseph and Mary fleeing Bethlehem because of a warning in a dream. I fail to see any real parallel except on very broad terms, and that is not good enough. This next one is true, but this was a general term for a lot of characters from the ancient world. Plus, this meant something different to the Christians. To be the son of God for the Jews and early Christians specifically meant they were the Messiah. In Roman pagan mythology, the term typically means the product of intercourse of a god or goddess. This is unlike the story of Jesus, since he is fully God and claimed to be the Lord. So these really do not parallel once you look at the context of both cultures. Plus, even if the term did mean the same thing, it is far too general since many deities were sons in various mythologies. Romulus did give instructions for future followers, but it is nothing like the Great Commission that Jesus gave. Romulus told one man to tell the Romans to make Rome the head of the world. Jesus said go and make disciples of all nations to a large group of followers. These are completely different, and just giving instructions is common for a lot of deities, so it is far too general to form a parallel. This next one is partially true, depending on who you read, because our accounts actually contradict. According to Livy, the darkness seems to have come from weather, which caused the whirlwind that took him up but neither Livy or Plutarch specifically said that he died here. Their story is that he simply vanished and never returned. Plutarch and Livy both mentioned there was a rumor that a group of senators dismembered him, but they seemed to dismiss it as not true, and then go on to mention how Romulus actually was taken up and became a god. 
Dionysus differs from Plutarch and Livy, and is skeptical of this legend. So he reports that Romulus did in fact die here, but says he was murdered by his own people. Romulus was king, so he could not have been murdered by people ruling over him. He also contradicts Livy and says the darkness was caused by a supernatural eclipse of the sun, and says it also happened at his birth. And he seems skeptical of the fabulous account. This next one would be a parallel to Elijah if true, which if legitimate would mean Livy copied the Book of Kings, but correlation is not causation, which is a piece of advice that Christ mythers should consider. And there is no source which says that Romulus was resurrected in a new glorified body. Remember, Livy and Plutarch didn't report that he actually died, only that he went missing or vanished in a whirlwind. And Dionysus doesn't think this actually happened. After he vanished, he did appear to one person and instruct him that Rome should be the head of all the world. But since neither Livy or Plutarch reported that he died, this would not qualify as a resurrection appearance. And deities appearing to humans with instructions is far too general to form a parallel. Dionysus only wrote that Julius reported this before moving on. And he being the only one who thought Romulus actually died, didn't report this meant Romulus had resurrected, or that it was even believed among the Romans. He doesn't go into the nature of the appearance itself, so it would be a conjecture to infer that this is definitely a resurrection appearance. Dionysus, being the only one who thought Romulus died, did not report his corpse when missing. He says patricians cut his body into pieces and then buried them, and no one even remotely suggests he received a new body. Plutarch says that when he appeared to Julius after his sudden disappearance, he was in shining and flaming armor, which is not to say that he was shining, but that his armor was. So to review our accounts of the end of the story of Romulus, the skeptic reports that he died, and the two believers report he was taken up to heaven and became a god. So it appears Christmithers are cherry picking and combining elements to try to force a resurrection correlation, but that doesn't work because the accounts are quite different and no one says there was a death followed by a resurrection. So there isn't really a correlation to the resurrection of Jesus. This last one doesn't correlate to the Trinity, since Trinitarianism is a form of monotheism, not tritheism, and we address this in a separate video. Remember, all of these authors are free online for anyone to read, so you can always fact check mysticists when they make claims like these. In vague similarities that might correlate on some level do not prove one borrowed from the other. Remember, correlation is not causation. So since that is the case, there is no evidence Jesus was just a myth based on Romulus.